so much as an, an inspiration, as just an idea. Uh, this December, Kirk and I went to Dubai. And it, that might have had a big um, play in how we saw this election. Because if you notice, all the girls, they're covered from their neck to their toes. But they're still owning the room. shy retiring type that might be hiding in a corner. Well, you know, these girls are owning the room. They're definitely not shrinking violets. You know, we just want it. And it's not really to dictate anything. It's just offering up an option, saying that, you know, if you wanted to, you can do it with a big bang still. Based everything on silhouette. Yeah. Silhouette was really important to us, and fabrication was important. Because we use a lot of fabric that we used in the past, because we're like, these words, modest, sustainability, diversity, keeps being thrown out in the fashion industry. We just want to show our definition of it. We don't have to be that by the Webster's definition of what it all means. So this is our way of, you know, coming to terms with what these things really mean. Well, we're going into the 13th year of our company, and Greta Constantine is derived from Stephen's mother's name and my grandfather's name. She's fictitious. She doesn't, she doesn't know Greta, but she, you know, she lives in our mind. She's, she's who we designed for. It's the woman of the world. It's like, it's very interesting when people do ask a question like that because even though there is no Greta, she's always present. Yeah. yeah. It's funny because, you know, I think in what most brands strive to achieve is to have a look. And there's definitely a Greta Constantine look. You know, we already have our DNA and it's something that we kind of came across and worked towards early in the 13 years. And this is just a continuation of that thread. Yeah. The biggest challenge is not knowing what the next season is going to be about. You know, you could have a really great season, sales could be really good, but then the following season, depending on the politics, depending on the situation of the world, it could change everything. So it's interesting because the, the world kind of dictates where we're going to be in the next, not even year from now, for us the next season. Because we just started doing our new resort collection and, you know, we, did, we always thought we were only going to do two collections a year, but now we took on a third just because there's a demand for clothing. So there's such a fast turnover of uh, seasons now. It's the pace, really. It's the pace that's really hard to maintain. We're only doing three seasons. There's a lot of other brands that are doing, you know, four seasons because there's also, you know, like holiday or whatever. And, but, and then they do menswear. You know, like it's, it's a breakneck speed and it's really hard on the system to be putting out that many collections. We do three and that's a lot for us. So, yeah, that's a really, I think that's really something to tackle for any kind of brand. We started this company, Kirk and I, 13 years ago without a business plan and we just kind of did what we felt was the right way to go. Um, we asked a lot of advice and I think that's probably a good thing. Um, but we always, you know, took on that advice and stewed on it and then made decisions of our own on what we felt were right. So, yeah, to do things organically in that way. And don't be in a rush. We were never in a rush. Never in a rush, never. Yeah. Still not in a rush, yeah. You've got to, like, yeah, take your time. You really do. And the industry is not the same when it was 13 years ago. It's changing all the time. So it's like, it's a matter you have to learn. Listen and learn. I think that's the only advice that I can give. It's like, it is like a big listening and learning industry.